my role here on the earth is to can be myself, squeeze the shit out, like all the juices, all the life juices out of what's given to me and be honest, at least with myself. This is an experience of the void. Welcome to Occupy the Void. My name's Christina, this is Tim. We have a very special guest, Nogal from Behemoth. How have sort of your experiences, you've had some pretty gnarly experiences with mortality and stuff. How have they affected your inner world and your gratitude for being alive? I'm 46 now, I was like sick and it could be terminal, could have been terminal for me, but luckily it wasn't when I was 33. So also very symbolic number, right? To all the Christians out there, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe I kind of process that, the crisis, you know, like, and, and then I just, I came up alive and, and, I, and I tried to make a statement and I tried to live my life to the fullest. I know it sounds totally cringy or whatever, but that's what it is. Very touristic, but that's what it is. And, um, it made me not want to waste a single fucking moment or a minute or, you know what I mean? It's just, it just made me realize how, how short life is. And that's mm. how much is left. Yep. I and you never know. 4,000 weeks. Exactly. Yeah. If you're lucky. It's nothing. Yeah. It makes me realize, you know, how, how fragile the existence is. And it sounds, sounds like that really impacted yourself as an artist and mm. your, maybe your drive to be like your full authentic self creatively because the reality yeah. was, was that after you, yeah, you kind know of what? returned back You've to being creative. You made some great music too. Yeah. And yeah, there was I'm kind of a that. renaissance for Behemoth coming out of that kind yes, of rebirth. Yes, of, yeah. I, I'd say that like last three records that there was post concert records yes. are our strongest and most successful of artistically, you know, fiscally, like you name it. It's, it's the biggest impact that we made on the, on the scene with those three records, which is amazing. It kind of proves something, you know, and I, I believe that's the mm. attitude, yep. my attitude towards life. You know, whenever I do something, you know, and sometimes I do like a goofy, silly stuff as well, you know, social media, I appear to be an idiot on many occasions. I like your silliness. Which, yeah, thank you. Which I consider a massive fucking, it's a, it's a big luxury, you know, to, mm. To have balls and not to give a flying fuck about what anyone thinks about what you're gonna do or say or how you're gonna present yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd say that before I'd be like more like, oh no, don't do this. You know what they're gonna think about it. Don't say that. Yep. It's gonna polarize the opinions. Maybe you know, you're, maybe monitor you're, yourself yeah, a bit yeah, more. Yeah, moderate. Yeah. And. Uh, and nowadays I'm like, okay, it's going to polarize the opinions. It's going to make you, some people fucking hate you when you uh -huh. say this or that. Well, it's, it's not my problem. My role here on earth is to fucking be myself, squeeze the shit out, like all the juices, all the life juices out of what's given to me and be fucking honest, at least with myself. Yeah. And, and it was really interesting you talking before about kind of the techniques that you use in regards to kind of touching into that gratitude and valuing of, of like right now. Are there any other kind of specific kind of techniques? Yes. You talked about that summer, you know, um, technique. Yeah. Is there any other kind of specific techniques All kinds that you of stuff. use? All kinds of stuff. Um, I can practice like, you know, even fake laughter, which is amazing practice. Is that a thing? See? Huh? Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you're there, like, you know, you're okay. <laughs> so you wake up. I mean, you live in Australia, so you never wake up grumpy, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it's always sunny here, or most times sunny. Not really we're in Melbourne. We're up, Not in Melbourne. <laughs> we're, we're right from, like, there's probably 30 or 60 sunny days throughout the year, and the rest yeah. is fucking gloomy and, and gloom and doom, right? All the yeah. way through. So you wake up, and it's gray, and it's depressing, and the politics and everything, you just, you summarize that. And it's like a big fucking fat black cloud above your head, right? And you just do this. <laughs> See, I'm thinking, you know, obviously, you know, I, I'm not in a 
um, had the mode <laughs> but you do this and you and if you do it in the mirror you see how how ridiculous you look yep. but it makes you, you you may even start laughing you know how stupid you look doing that that brought me joy but guess what for your brain it makes no difference if you're faking your laughter or you're like sincerely laughing about something when you're like ah you do it like if you fake it if you're you make those gestures those faces yeah your brain gets this positive this, positive the, signals the same chemical effect yeah and it immediately affects your brain yeah and it just click something you know what i mean super easy anyone can do it and you see i started yeah. doing that and i and you started laughing at me because i probably look like an idiot it was awesome but, but in a funny way right <laughs> yeah and, you know and, what i mean it's like and that's a thing of like that gave people, me joy it really did give me joy <laughs> i'm not going to lie because i did yeah. that yeah it really no. did it was wonderful and whatever energy you put out you know people absorb it it's like very hard to not absorb the energy that people around loop. you yeah, yeah. or or the other, uh, other like thing that is cool you know when you're stressed or whatever you just start shaking or like or like doing this start shaking and yeah, like right. you relieve the stress and you know your blossoms are moving faster and you immediately you're like okay something's changing you yeah. know what i mean it's like yeah you 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 start see you start feeling your skin it's like it's something's happening you know you're you're out of that um I don't know how to say that. You just stimulate yourself, you know, by like simple moves, mm. a simple hit. It's not going to hurt you, you know, but it's waking something. Mm. Do you ever dance? Are you a dancer? Huh? Are you a dancer at home? Like, do you dance around the house? No, all? but I, I do. When I'm drugged out, that I love dancing. <laughs> it's awesome. You're it's awesome. awesome. <laughs> but like in life, I'm I'm way too. Believe it or not, I'm way too stiff to just go out and dance. You know, yeah. even if I'm drinking only. But I do feel like, at some point, I would like to attend dancing classes and start like moving because it's. Um, I sense it can do great things to you, uh, you know, yeah. like to your brain, to your body, to, to the flexibility. I do yoga, you know, and when you see Behemoth on stage, I do moves. That's why I thought you do moves. I do, yeah, but I do moves that are not um, very accurate for this genre of music, you know. Yeah. So I, every now and then I'm being called a faggot or <laughs> something else, you know, people try to uh insult me which is never possible yeah, yeah. uh Look, because i'm is... because in the first place i'm not gay you know but there's nothing wrong with being gay you know but yes. you, you can't really tell me oh he's so gay yeah. like no i'm i'm just moving that way and it's maybe out of your perception, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. perception of what death and black metal is absolutely but i'm doing that because that's my way of expressing my inner thing mm. okay you're just being your authentic self on stage so fucking loot and that's awesome this uh multi-piled you know yeah. like uh, exaggerated and th that's something uh i play violin and sing in a band navel of Viscaris, and uh, i often get comments about my dancing on stage in a i play in a kind of progressive extreme metal band and it's considered serious music but you're you know, a lion. Sometimes it's, it's a lion on stage. Sometimes it's you know yeah. just fun to be yeah. yourself and just Absolutely. not think about you anything know, like else. Sometimes I would just you know I would just burst out of laughter you know and and that would um, I mean considering the whole like the whole thing the yeah. whole thing you know you do things that take you out of that and I consider it very healthy. Now, just quickly, you mentioned that you were interested in maybe getting dance classes sometime. Is yes. there a, a particular style or genre that you feel m you might connect with? I don't know why this gives me experience? so much joy thinking about it, but it does. Okay, you know, we'll wrap you know, it up. Yeah. You know what? Like, ad hoc, any dance. Yeah. Any dance, but this, this, you just made me thinking, Mel. You know. So, I'd really like you to do that and just remember us. When you find when you find oh, the okay. movement, when you find I will. the movement, I will. When you I find will. the movement, I'd like to be notified. I will, I will, yeah. but I, I'm still trying to figure because I'm not good at like 
Well, then yeah. I don't I'm, know I'm how to dance. Okay. I'm we actually to, do have to wrap yeah, this up. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine Nurgle like doing maybe salsa. I like all like of this. I, I would do fucking tango. I would do fucking like I don't anything really. Final yeah. question: yes. How do you define mental health? Uh, I think I don't. Uh. I just I live my life like you know taking care of my health, you know, and uh, of my uh, about my well-being and I don't really define that. I don't really think I I do a lot of things, you know, but I don't I start not overthink, you know. I just yeah, but but it's that's pretty essential, you know, yeah. to to stay sane in the insane environment. Yes. And um I don't know. Or like go and see me on stage and I think it's a big part of me staying sane, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely. A beautiful thing. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank right you on. so that much so for good. your time. Yeah, I really Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. It was cool. This is an experience of the void. Yeah, so just first of all, I mean, what a pleasure it was to speak with Nurgle. We, we managed to fit that chat in like very closely before he was going on stage at Good Things, and we actually didn't think we were going to be able to talk to him. And so it was such a thrill when, um, when he was able to walk in the door and... You know, I think one of the things that really uh, struck me, especially as as a fan of Behemoth, you know, and, you know, I discovered them, you know, way back in the early 2000s. I was a huge fan of their Demigod record. I remember seeing them here in Melbourne at the Corn Hotel on that album. And um, the next couple albums after that, you know, I, I liked them, but, you know, I, I didn't enjoy them quite as much as Demigod. And so then when he got leukemia in 2010... And then the band kind of had about four or five years off. And when they came back with The Satanist, I remember just thinking, wow, this feels like a completely reborn band. It was just the most creative thing I thought that they had ever done, you know, which Nurgle kind of mentioned, you know, that he thought that their last three albums they've done, you know, post-leukemia um, have been their best ones and they have been the most successful ones. And I think that's just really interesting <clears throat> to see that difference because he talked about the, the mindset and how his approach to life changed after that experience. And uh, that's so fascinating. It's such a great example because you, you could actually hear that his approach to life changed and his musical output as an artist, as a creative artist, changed as well. Hmm. It's it's really, I love, like I the quote is, um, and I may paraphrase here, you can't really live until you know what it is to die. You don't, until you know in a really deep way that you're going to die and there's nothing more confronting and more um, that drives home that point more than actually, I mean, he, he had an illness that he was told was terminal. Like I can't even imagine what it's like to get in that headspace and to get on the other side mm. of it and get to, and know that you have this life that you thought was going to be taken away. I mean, I can't, you know, I can't even imagine it. And yeah, the, the effect on his creative output. Yeah. It's so palpable like that. You know, I'm not as cool an old school fan, but I love the Satanist. I thought it was incredible. And I think um, it's so wonderful to see people have a new lease on life and turn something so negative and so horrific into something really beautiful where people uh, you know, seeing his, I, I guess in some ways, maybe he started expressing his true self more. Maybe he, there was less artifice or that, not to say that he was artificial, but maybe he was able to connect on a deeper level with himself. So. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching Occupy the Void with Tim and Christina. If you'd like a deeper dive on this week's episode, check out the audio only podcast on your preferred podcast platform. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, drop a comment below and we'll see you next time.